All right, so I opened up my email today, and I got notices about some new articles. This is one of them that's been out. How many people are there in the world? Man, maybe we should deal with something about passwords because remember your first question on your final will be passwords are there you go so we're going to talk about passwords today a little bit and so here we one of the things that's interesting I think is um, in here we talk about a cyber criminal and he's willing to sell 15 million records for a, a project management tool that was called Trello and somehow those there are people that want to monetize your records. Why would they want to do that? Does your data have value? So why does why does Google give you free email? Because they're a generous company and they just like to give away stuff? No. Why does Microsoft give you free email? Because there's value in that data and the stuff that you have hiding around. So I think it's important that we look at a couple of items to deal with data and how we start to look at it. So now, here's what I love. The article ends with, of course, the sales pitch. Hey, if you just had malware bites, none of this would have happened, right? There is, and I will, I will state this again, even when we layer them, there is no tool that will completely protect you from being an idiot. Now, all of us have idiotic moments. Hopefully, hopefully, you have less than the average boo-boos, but it happens. We get locked in our own thoughts, and we go, oh, man, I, I, uh, I did something bad. So. Here's one I'm going to bring over. I quit closing tabs before I mess with it. So what I want to look at is this group, and there's a lot of them out there, they collect passwords from these stolen breaches. So this came out in, in December, so it's not that old. And the most common password. Really, if you're protecting your world with one, two, three, four, five, six, or the even better one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we we need to work on probably some skills. But the number of times that these passwords show up is astounding because this is how many times that password showed up in these in these compromised lists. Two and a half million times somebody used one, two, three, four, five, six. Huh. That doesn't sound really good. And if you scroll through here, most of these are really horrible. And they're not very, very strong. Let's see. Uh, football. Baseball. Superman. Well. All the way down to, to 199, common. So these are not safe passwords. If you scroll or find a list like this and your password is on that list, what should you do? I, I would hope. Now, most password services now require you to do different things, like it has to be eight characters long. So we know that the longer a password is, typically the better. And in fact, on the wall over there, there, there is a sheet talking about passwords in between the doors and compares them to underwear. And so some of the things we, we do make some sense. Do we want to use the same password on everything? No, you don't recycle your underwear and keep wearing it for three days in a week, do you? Or three days 
in a row. If you do, I don't want to know. McLean, you were looking a little suspicious there. So, um, what we want to do is think about things that we can do. And so, we'll approach this as we go through the whole semester, and we, we have a lot of pieces on passwords. But one of the first things I want to show you really quickly is this website here. And so, I'm going to encourage you go, to go to it. Have I been pwned? Have I been pwned.com? So this actually allows us to do a couple of things. This researcher is is legitimate. I wouldn't take you to some place where, where it's scary, although this may scare you. Um, and so these guys collect all these breaches and records, and they'll pay sometimes to get them from other people. And sometimes even the guys that have stolen them are like, oh, I just want to get recognized, so I'm going to send them to the, this guy that runs this Have I Been Pwned website. So the first thing I'm going to do is in here we can put in our email address. So I'm going to put in, and to see if it shows up in any of these, oh, and it does. So it's going to say, what breaches has this showed up? Uh, here's a Apollo database, B2B business, Canva. Holy cow, LinkedIn. So Zynga, all these different pieces, it got, it, it, that that doesn't mean they have both my username and my password, but my, my username does show up in there. Well, maybe it's better. Maybe I use, I'll throw in my Gmail and see if it's been, ah, crap. No. Now, weirdly, it's a lot of the same ones. Oh, Chegg. So... Domain registration, I, I don't even know what the heck that is. So, great. So, if you look at this, this is a really, really good way to look at if you're vulnerable or not. And my guess is, if your email address has been out for very long at all, you're going to have a breach on there. Now, your Bobcat mail here may be safe just because that you haven't had it that long. Or it may also be out there. So this website I like is it's got a couple of other things that we can do. So we can find all the domains. So if we want to enter an email address and it's find all breached email addresses on that domain. Now, in this case, we'd have to control it. but And it'll send out a verification of some other pieces. But it's kind of handy. If I run a company and I have a bunch of company emails, I can see who's all been, been, been dealt with. So here's all the websites and different pieces that this company groups together. So they have a millions and millions and millions of different records. But here's where I think it's kind of interesting. So here's where we can put in our password. Now. Here's, if I put in my email address, that's not very tricky, right? But if I put in my password, I get a little more nervous, right? Because you're like, oh, man. So here's why I'll say I trust this and I put in my own password to try it. So if I put in, and I'm going to use a password that I saw somebody use recently. Oh. Yeah, I put in password one. So I'm going to try to make it tougher. I'm going to do what they did. And, oh, I got it down to 29,000 times because they added a special character. Now, when I put in my password that I used for my account here on my local account, I didn't find any, any of that. So... I want to look at passwords and how we can make them as safe as possible. So we're going to look at some recommendations. So, hang on. I'm 
moving on. Okay, hang on a second. My YouTube and I are disagreeing. Can I move on? Ah, okay. Let's see if that helps. All right, so this is an oldie but goodie, but it makes some interesting points about passwords. So if you don't know who that is, that's Nixie Pixel. He disappeared for a while. He's come back. A Linux expert and some other people. So there's this. And hopefully the audio will come across. If not, I'll show you how to find it. Daily Wicked websites, all of our identifying information, like addresses, birthdays, even credit card numbers, all with the assurance that they'll keep our information safe. But that isn't necessarily the case. What is the secure password exactly? You'd be surprised. I'm sure you've all been forced to use a strong password before. I bet you've been told that your stupid strong password means at least eight characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, one number, one symbol, but it can't be an answer stand or an exclamation point. So I know, I'll use my birth date and my son's name. That will be completely random and unpredictable. Despite what they tell us, if we take a step back and look, things like names, places, cities, nicknames, and so on are formulaic. Yeah, your buddy Bahadurs is actually a really popular person name. So if somebody, although why are you giving us instructions on how to narrow the randomness of our passwords? Really? Really? I mean, come on, do so many set requirements of a password to be a specific way? We'll likely end up just naming something we'll never remember. And then because it's so hard to remember, we'll just reuse it all over the place. It's just super hackable that way. And ends up being not random at all, ironically. This is such a huge problem, and it's safe to be poked fun of safety. With 20 years of effort, we have successfully trained everyone to use passwords that are hard for humans to remember, but easy for computers to guess. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm equally guilty of this. I have to catch myself all the time, and it's because we're indoctrinated by those websites and other people to kind of think that way. So we have to retrain ourselves on how we judge the criteria of making a strong password, and I think we can that by knowing how passwords are hacked, we can figure out how to make them secure. Things like safety, but what is safety? Like the comic said, what makes a password hard for a computer to guess is called entropy. It's basically like a measurement on how unpredictable and random a piece of information is. Again, we've been taught to think that basic words in the English language or what have you are pretty insecure, but that's not necessarily true. If you can bear with me, there's actually a really easy way to show you how unpredictable a word is. So I'm just going to list and see exactly how many words there are in the English language, which so far in my console is 234,937. That means if your password is just one random word, we've had to go through over 280,000 of them to try to crack it. So mathematically, each word that we choose is like a log base of 2 out of 234,937. Log 2 is the same as the amount of words in the English language. 
All right. So what we're looking at is why don't we use words? Does a string of random numbers easy to memorize? No. But if we had four words, you could memorize that. And it's just kind of one of those things. I have a banking site I went to that made me redo my password again. And it limits you to 12 characters. But it does require a special character, but only one of four. Like, wait a minute here. You've made it easier to crack than ever before. And when we see those requirements, my guess is if I said, oh, man, you need an 8 to 12 character password, and you need a capital letter and a special character and a number, you're going to write it in this format. So you're going to say, oh, I, I need two numbers, yep, I need a special character, and we find out that, that the bang character, exclamation mark, most common one you'll see, and you put the capital letter at the first. So if I know human nature, so here's that idea of now I'm not only doing that random looking through data, but I know that, that this website's created a pattern that most people are going to fall into. And if I look, 80 to 100% of those passwords are going to be following that same template. And if I know that template, that makes breaking into it even, even easier. So that idea of entropy, in other words, how random a password is, more words are better. Longer is better. But if the password looks something like, I can't remember that, right? Yeah. But there are ways around that, and so we'll talk about those as we go, about using some other tools that are available to us. So this site is great, lets us know if, if our passwords and our usernames are out there. If they are, take a look at those. Maybe they are legitimate, and you've hopefully changed them at whatever site that was. We are going to do an experiment where we're going to do some recording of how many passwords and things you have. Um, and I think it's going to be quite frightening when you actually start looking at them and logging them, how many different passwords you should have or how many accounts you have that require a password. Am I as guilty as anybody about reusing passwords? Yeah, because there's so many of them out there. So a couple years ago when we did a study at a hospital and we just were polling doctors and made them do a kind of a log, the average physician had 192 sites or passwords they needed to remember. Are they going to create a different one for each one? No. No. So, I just wanted to take a look at this and kind of show you. And people are even dumber than that. So, we have these breaches. We have these things we need to deal with. So, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention and kind of show you where we were at. And did I collapse our class? Hopefully not. All right, so one of the things I want to make sure everybody looks at here so is what materials are in here. So I'm going to add some discussion boards in and some different pieces. So I want to make sure everybody is on the same page. This should be very similar for the online sections about what materials are in here. Um, I do take things out sometimes when I see that they don't work or whatever. Cengage sometimes has some of its own unique strange issues, so um, we're, apparently I got an email. Uh, so what I want to look at in this week is we're going to talk about threats and endpoints. Um, so we have a lot of pieces in here I want to want to talk about, so I'm going to let the stop my recording so at least uh, I don't drive the online student also to tears, but uh, look at your passwords, look at those things around you and, and see if if you're using good practices or bad practices.